the DC United killer Tiago came back out. <laughs> Why does he hate DC United? Bro, he went to the Capitol one day and was like, "This is trash, bro. I came to America for this, bro." <laughs> you know what happened? He went to the post office museum and he's like, "That's the best thing you got." Post office. Don't they have the Smithsonian? Yeah, but maybe he didn't know. Bro, he, he should have said- went to the Smithsonian. <laughs> he would have been like, "I'm not scoring against DC." <laughs> We suck or not, man. We want to know. Give us feedback. <laughs> they already know we suck. Welcome to the City Boy Show, episode five, season two. I'm Javier. This is Danny. What is up? What is going on? We are back. Another W at home. It feels nice. The it... fortress of solitude. <laughs> we do not lose. That a lot casa. of people. The fortress of solitude that people are saying is too small. Oh, <laughs> did you see that article today? Uh, it was From MLS Athletic? Buzz. Oh no, well, yeah, oh, MLS I'm... Buzz posted it on Twitter. That's how we heard about it. Uh, and, and it was an article written by The Athletic about the pitch being a bit So what, wait, was the article specifically just about that? Because I didn't pay for a paywall. I know you got the big bucks here, but... It's part of the New York Times. You know, I try to keep up with the news. So bougie. I, I told time, you guys. Like... Bougie Westchester, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so was it strictly about the actual... It was, it was about... Uh, NYCFC's winning record at home. And that they use the field to their advantage. Like, that's not something that they, like, that's something they think about and how, like, you can easily set up a, like, when the ball's mishandled by the opponent, they know how to attack with it and two passes and you're, you know, you're, you're able to score. Um, and so that's kind of what it was about. What's really interesting about the read, though, which was a great, it was a great read. I recommend everyone read it. I thought it was really good. I heard, there was David Villa comments in there. David Villa was saying that the pitch on the sideline, on the right sideline, is actually a little crooked, and he <laughs> <laughs> and he would notice that, uh, and so then defenders would give him a little bit of space because they thought he was about to be out of bounds, but he knew it wasn't out of bounds, <laughs> and so that he would keep, he would get some space That's that way. Hilarious. Yeah, so it was actually really good. But I found at the end what was interesting was. You know, the whole article is like they went, they do so well at home because of the pitch. And then he's like, has a little asterisk at the bottom. And he's like, they also have a really good record at City Field and Red Bull. Area. <laughs> I don't know if that's true about Red Bull, but, but I, I, but it, we just went at home, man. We just went at home. We're, we're a good team at home. The crowd is there. I mean, you could blame it on the pitch all you want. But, and I think everybody said this on Twitter to MLS Buzz. Everybody who at an MLS who plays at home has a good home record. It's just that's home field advantage. That's just what's expected. That's true. But if they say that if you take out the first year, they, their home record is better than like anyone else in the league. That the first year when NYCFC first joined, they were horrible. And, that, and, that, and their record wasn't that great. But the rest of the years are just just so much better than the rest of the all right MLS. so after the first season we got this magic boo boo no, it's the uh, same field it's, it's soccer we're all play- i know it might be a little uh, the dimensions are tighter than other dimensions of other uh fields but regardless I, that happens all over the world no facts but at the same time <laughs> i get it oh and then at the end they actually ex a coach like another coach who was anonymous and they were like what do you think of this pitch and he goes, it's not the pitch. They get really great players, and they're just a good team. So, <laughs> well, uh, yeah, that's true. And credit to um, uh, Wayne Rooney. He he said the same thing after the loss against us. He said, hey, look, we could blame the pitch all we want, but at the end of the day, they were the better team. Yeah. So you could blame the pitch. You could blame whatever you want. But if we're the better team, we're the better team. That's really what it is. But let's get into the vibes how was it uh how did how did the pregame feel like to you did you have fun i had fun did you have fun? <laughs> i had a good time we went to stands yeah we saw the march we were in the march we marched <laughs> we didn't we tried not to record people always be like be part of the march don't record 
we were part of the march we recorded a little bit we went back into the march <laughs> We uh, saw a lot of our boys. We gave us some Talos Magno stickers. You guys, we are nervous. We are shy people. So if you want a sticker, you recognize us. Yo, come get a say, sticker, bro. Come get one. We'll give it to you guys. We just don't say hi because we're scared. You know I what don't know about all that. But... I'm scared. You know what happened to me? <laughs> what? I, we're sitting at the press box. You're in the... Um, I'm on the field. pictures on the field. I'm in the press box. And uh, Christian Polanco, the dude from the Cooligans, sitting two seats away from me, man. And I'm like, I want to give this guy a sticker. And, you know, he, he looks at me, he gives me a nod. Like, I think I know your face. I'm like, you know, I know your face. Of course, <laughs> I know your face. You're slightly famous. Uh, and um, slightly, that's a knock to him, bro. I'm saying it's soccer. <laughs> it's still soccer in the United States. Slightly famous. In the world, in this world, he's famous. Fair, fair, slightly fair. famous everywhere else. Um, I really, and I'm just, I'm just like a shy guy. And it's also weird because I'm like, yeah, I know too much about this guy. He knows nothing about me. He <laughs> might know we have a podcast. I know that this guy plays. Uh, he was playing uh, that game that we were playing on the PS4. It takes two. Oh, that was a great game. It's a great game. He was playing it with his wife when they were pregnant. <laughs> <And> just, <laughs> yeah, I was just doing that with my, my wife. Which and, is I was, crazy. and I want to the same thing because I was doing that with my wife too. And I was like, I really wanted to tell him. And I was like, nah, that's just weird, man. Like, you don't know nothing about me. I don't know. And I'm going to go give him a sticker. He goes to throw away his food, never comes back. And I'm like, damn, man. Well, next time you see him, give him I a damn sticker. Like, you know what? We're going to do is we're going to take this, this this little speech I gave, <laughs> go post it on social media, tag him. Because that's what we do. We rather talk on to two fans that, uh, on camera than actually talk to people in real life. <laughs> Point is, come get a sticker. We're down. We want to meet people. We just got to get out of our comfort zone. Let's do it. Let's do it. About getting out of your comfort zone. This guy's been watching a Ted Lasso, so he's feeling all emotional. I, know, I am feeling emotional. Ted Lasso is a great show. We'll save that for another episode. But <laughs> let's uh, let's get into it. So an interview was recently posted about David Lee, and you had some insightful thoughts about some things that were brought up. Well, I don't know if it's insightful, but I thought it was something good to talk about instead of just talking about. Which we, the win that we knew we were going to get against DC United, which was closer than we actually it expected. was much closer than we expected. But. I just thought there's other things that happened this week inside of the NYCFC world that I thought was worth talking about, and one of them was this um, interview with David Lee. And I think what I found interesting about it was that he gave just a lot of color to the players that left. Left, like why did Tinner Home leave? Why did Sean Johnson leave? Why did Callens leave? Why did Maxi leave? Yeah. Um, and I think it's just everything that we've heard. So, I, I mean, it's good to know that, like, everything we heard was validated. So, Callens really wants to play in Europe. Sean Johnson, you made it pretty clear that Sean Johnson looked at the squad and said, I think it's time to find new opportunities, which is interesting. Uh, but he was very nice about it. But he did say that. Uh, Tinner Home wants to be with his family. And because of the injuries, he was looking for a long-term contract. And the team that he signed with gave him that contract. Gotcha. Um, and they just couldn't do it here. And the last one was Maxi. And I thought that was really, really interesting, too, because he said we expected Maxi to be on this team. And Maxi said, look, my family has seen me play in Mexico. They've seen me play in MLS. They've seen me play in Europe. They have never seen me play at my home field. And I want my kids to see that. And he said that he was really sad about it, but he thought that was the right thing to do. And I really like appreciate that. I don't think I've ever, I honestly I didn't know what David Lee looked like until that that <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that interview. Um, and uh, I'm glad that I'm seeing that they're like, look, this team needs to win, but at the same time, we got to do right by them uh, because we don't want to burn any bridges. And I think it just helps bring new talent in, right? Because they see that we are pushing for their success versus over the team's success, and. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a really good interview. I'm talking about like new talent and stuff. One thing he was bringing up that he tried to like elaborate. I know it's a full discussion, but he did mention young DPs versus older DPs and how the compensation work. I think if it's a young DP, you have to guarantee 200,000 200, for that year in salary versus if you're an older DP, uh, you have to guarantee, I think, $600 from your salary that year. Uh, 600000 sorry. 650000 650000 which is interesting because I had no idea about that. You can't, uh, you trying to find that in a rule book is very confusing. <laughs> so it was cool to see like the inside of like the actual like business side of it. Like, okay, these young DPs, like I think uh, Talis was a young DP signing. Santi's a young DP signing because I think the age is under 23. 
Uh, yeah. Or 23, 20, 23 and younger and then over 24. Yeah. 24 then you become over. a DP. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it was pretty insightful to hear all that. What I didn't get or maybe got was that there's not like unique slots for young DPs over not young DPs. No, so I think I it's thought, overall three. Yeah, DPs I think it's though. overall three. And then your salary cap is just hit different if you're yeah, 23 that's... and below and or over 23. But the, the thing is, if you're a young DP and you then become 24, you're a normal DP. And I think I that that's what I kind of gathered. I don't know yeah, if I'm what, correct. Yeah, yeah, that's what I got too. So I think just to explain it for people who don't want to go back to the David Lee interview and watch <laughs> it, is if you were 23 and under, uh, you get in their DP signing, you can pay them whatever you want but to your salary cap it's gonna be a 200k hit if you are over 23 years old so 24 and above then your salary cap is six hundred and fifty thousand dollar hit and so and then you have a i think the mls salary cap is 5.2 million dollars yeah um so that still matters right it's not like there's zero money to a dp accounting towards your salary cap it's just changes. There's just got to be an easier way to do this. I understand they're trying to make the league competitive while getting stars and not trying to overspend for stars and make sure. But it's just like so complicated. Like the fact that we have to explain that means something's not working, right? I don't know if it's that complicated. I mean, the NFL has a complicated salary cap. I don't understand it either, but it uh -huh. makes the conversation interesting and it keeps parity. So um, my opinion, keep doing it. Maybe increase the salary cap a little bit is my thought. Well, there were there was recently a post on like Twitter or Instagram of Ben was it Benteke? I don't know if you saw it, but it might have been of Benteke like two years ago saying that MLS should increase the salary cap. But then I think you get to the point where it's like where we talk about other leagues, there's not pair like there's not competitive leagues, and it's because you don't have a salary cap. I get raising the salary cap, but so Benteke was saying get rid of the salary cap, is what you're saying. I think so. He was saying something. Something along the raise it one of those but. i think at this point that's not a good idea yeah I but think we can save that for an episode where we have less content <laughs> <laughs> um did are we getting into cushion oh wait one last thing before about the david lee interview yeah the first of all i love that they just ask the questions of like everyone's you would think most management would be scared to ask uh, or answer i guess yeah. the question but they asked do you think oh will you sign santi uh, is Santi a direct replacement for Oh, Maxi? yeah. I thought that was a great... I thought it was great that they would try to answer that question. And two things that I came out of that was, one, Maxi was more than just the player. He was, like, a great player. He was also, like, a leader of the team. And it's like, is Santi going to be able to do that? And he was, like, important to the community. And, like, everyone loved Maxi. Uh, so that's one way that, like, Santi's different. But also, he talks about how, like, Maxi was more of a distributor uh versus uh santi is more has more dribbling ability and has the and wants to attack which yeah. is very different than maxi and so he was saying you can't compare those two you know directly and he understands why you will but it's not the same so i find that interesting because i expected santi to be the next maxi and as i want him to distribute the board more and give people opportunities more but i think david lee and the rest of the team knows that he wants to attack more so i wonder how that works in the future yeah i mean if you keep and we could get into this uh very soon because talis magno finally did score at the nine position but if you do keep playing talis magno as a false nine and santi's aggressive and still scoring then it kind of still works right yeah because he would he'll push back in and then something go over the top of him so that's true but we'll see um did you want to get into cushing and blue city radio yeah i mean i felt like i talked a lot about this david lee thing but <laughs> i thought the one thing about the uh, if no one's watched it uh nick cushing was on blue city radio and i thought the interview there with nick cushing was great i thought the one cool thing that i heard that i thought we could talk about was just that you know he coached the women's team um i think it was manchester manchester right yeah. it was in manchester yeah city. city yeah so it was manchester city's women team and there and one of the questions that was asked was what's the difference between, between coaching the men's team and the women's team yeah do you want to say what the response was no i don't remember the response so you tell me <laughs> <laughs> but pretty much he was saying that like uh you tell the male players like what to do and they do it versus when you 
uh, tell the female players what to do. They ask why. And he says, you know, that's Because not... we're dummies. <laughs> <laughs> and we loosely <laughs> follow in the dumb. He didn't say ask why in the younger times when they were, like, being groomed to be soccer players versus you don't get that same type of grooming as a female player. But I do think it's because we dummies. <laughs> Uh, and I just actually really appreciate that because it just makes you a more intelligent player, I would think, by yeah. asking why. So, uh, as usual, it's another point on why women are smarter than us. <laughs> Agreed. I agree. Let's get into this DC United game. Uh, final score was 3 2 for anybody who hasn't watched, who nobody, somebody's not paying for Apple TV right now. <laughs> if you're not paying for Apple TV, but you're watching us free, we appreciate you, bro. <laughs> um, we finally got a goal from our number nine position. Everything's resolved, right? We're good, bro. We're <laughs> Do gonna... we want to bring up the, the lineup for the game so we could talk yes, yes, that yes. Real let's, quick? let's get into the lineup. So the lineup was um, we had Barraza, we had Kufre, we had Chano, Sanz, Santi Rodriguez, Perea, Tiago Martins, Pellegrini, Gray, Talis Magno, and Keaton. Would you have done anything different with the lineup? Well, we won the game, so no, I would have not done anything <laughs> different with the lineup. Uh, the one change we saw from one week to the other was Gray actually playing um, for Zenic. Uh And I thought he played really well. I thought he did well. I, I think I saw some feedback on Twitter that uh, the the offense was completely dead on the right side uh, because Gray was playing the game. But I thought he brought like a lot of defensive intensity. Intensity, yeah, that we didn't have of Lennox. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Too. Anytime it was being down on the field, like anytime Tinnerholm made a, a tackle, the the fans erupted. It, it's it's not about uh, I mean not Tinnerholm. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Tinnerholm too, but Tavon Gray. It's not about Tavon Gray uh playing in the Bronx, him being from the Bronx. There's always just something about it because the fans really rally behind Tavon Gray. And you could tell when he gets fired up about something, the, the crowd like starts actually getting really into it. Yeah. No, I thought he played really well. And I thought we needed that defensively. Uh, you know, unfortunately, those two goals I felt we gave away was just us being careless at those moments in time. Uh, but like if you take away those two goals, which is kind of hard to do, but if you take them away or like those instances of seconds where the game changed, the rest of the time, I thought we were so solid defensively. And I think a big part of that was because Gray was in the game. And I and I was wondering why they played Gray. And, and I think a lot of people were saying, well, it's because you can't just take have Mitcha take his job day one. But at the same time, Mitcha's not going to play next week. He's going to be gone. So you don't want to put a guy in there who hasn't played a full 90 minutes. Well, you got to remember, Gray was a little banged up last week. And so, I mean, I don't think it's a it's a fact that uh Micha has the starting role already or that Nick Cushion's like I don't want to give him the starting role Me, Tavon still has shown that he has quality there yeah he might not be as great offensive it might be a little bit of offensive liability but you that defense is very important right That's you true. you need him back there so I don't think I don't think Micha's completely low I mean Tavon's completely lost the job I think it's they're battling it out one week Maybe Tavon's a better. Maybe we need better defensive, uh, a better defensive back. So I don't. I I don't. I just don't think he's lost a job. But that's that's my opinion on that. But on Santi, let's get into Santi. He scored another. He scored a goal. He did score a goal. I thought it was a little funny that goal because he had. Talis Magno was wide open. I'm, I'm not taking away anything oh from my Santi. God. I'm just this saying. guy, yo, why are you <laughs> such a Santi I'm hater? Just saying he had a chance to distribute it. He did what he does best. As long as the goal went in, it was great. And he had the pace and he was in the right place, right? Pereira did have a nice pass to him. Yeah, he set him got up. Him, he set him which up Pereira, nicely. we didn't have the best game. So he, he, he I, I thought it was an average game for Pereira. But you're a Santi hater, bro. I'm not a Santi <laughs> hater. I love Santi. Uh, I love that he yells at the refs. And that's <laughs> oh, my <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I just, I, I was wondering, I was really... Like was holding my breath. I was like, "Is he going to try to make the shot? Is he going to?" Because Talas and I think Pellegrini were stepping up too, and they were wide open. And I wasn't sure what he was going to do. He made the right decision. We got a goal. I'm happy with Santi. Do you think Santi played well the entire game? I think overall, yes, he I played. It, he so. played a really well game. I I don't think we can knock him. Uh, and I still and we we talked about this last week. Still, his, only his second game with the team. He's going to be rusty. Uh, well, no. Now it's his third game, but he only came in 
as yeah, a sub yeah. for the other game. But I, I think he's getting better every week, and now it's starting to feel like, okay, our attackers are here. Game's starting to open up a little. We're looking dangerous. We're looking like the NYCFC that we knew last year. You know what I mean? So it's starting to it's starting to gel, and it, it feels nice when it starts to gel. Yeah. Also, I just it's games are so much more fun when you're scoring three goals versus one goal. <laughs> uh, and so I thought that was just great to see out there. And Fatmo, or I don't know, I always say it wrong, but they they gave him an eight point five ranking. Was he the highest rated player on the team? Yeah, he actually was. That's crazy. I mean, but he did have a goal and assist, so that's that, that'll get you that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, what else we got? What else we got? Well, did you hear that they were going to sign PSV made it very clear that they signed Ledesma to a long term contract, but that he will not play for them and that he's being loaned out. Yeah, they didn't even like he wasn't in practice or something they like said that. He's right? not practicing. He's going to be loaned out. Tom Bogart pretty much confirmed that he was coming to NYCFC. It's not real unless NYCFC source confirms it. <laughs> You're gonna upset a lot of people with that comment. Why? People, you know, people hate on NYCFC. Source. I'm waiting for NYCFC source to confirm. I it. think he might have <laughs> confirmed it like 18 times already. <laughs> but uh, no, I love the source. Uh, but um, point is, he's coming to NYCFC. That's exciting. What do you think that means? That means we have. A lot of good players. <laughs> well, I don't know. How, this kid is young, right? He's young. Oh, uh, I checked. Well, I checked our whole he was team 25. is twenty-five. Our team is young. I mean, I haven't personally seen him play, but from everybody, what everybody's saying, he's gonna be deadly and he's dangerous, and he plays the ten, right? That's what I hear. He plays the ten. I don't know. It's gonna be real interesting. Yeah. I mean, but if if Santi likes attacking and doesn't want to play the ten, and you pull a Desma there and you put Santi on the right, and you have Pereira come in as a yeah, super sub your favorite player pellegrini might be coming off the bench then oh no Who you put on the left uh that's the problem that's the problem and that, that gets into our neck well no let's let's go first let's talk about talis he scored his first goal okay. his family was in the stands it was a great moment for him i think after the game he like expressed like oh like this is this felt like uh something i needed like i wanted to like it finally felt like i scored for the fans like and it was my like it was kind of like his coming out party right yeah. because he's gotten into this new role where he's the number nine and everybody expects him to score and he just it's been he hasn't scored yet until uh until this game yeah I was also just so upset at the ref for calling it offside because it ruined the celebration for us. <laughs> and it was there. such a bad offside. Call. A... How did you not see that? Also, if you're on the pitch, you would see that the ref wasn't even close because they were all running really quickly. So the he's trying to catch up. And I think he just called offside just to be safe <laughs> because that made no sense, man. Also, Pellegrini was like on the line passing the ball out. The, there was a defender on him and Talas was just so far back. That was the worst offside call I've ever seen. <laughs> Well, one, I got to give credit to Key and Parks, though, for the through pass to Pellegrini, which then was an easy Pellegrini cross to uh, Talis. And, you know, Parks is just Parks. Parks Parks and Sands just feel like these two that are just like, yeah, they're going to do their thing. And we're just going to we just we've become we've accepted it. But like we really need to acknowledge every game like, oh, these guys are good. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They've been only working together for like two games. And it feels like they've always been working yeah. together. And we're taking them for granted already only after two games. Yeah, agreed. Um, But yeah, so happy for Talis. Are, it, is the number nine problem solved for us? I mean, I overreaction. That's a, you know, <laughs> that's a very big. You know, what's interesting, though, I did a little pregame minute with uh juan carlos and he called it before the game my man said watch out talis magno scoring i gave him this face <laughs> yeah okay and he did it i think people have a lot of confidence in talis magno i haven't been as him on the nine and i think he needed that confidence so hopefully that confidence he has now opens up the floodgates and he becomes a scoring machine um but we'll see i don't know if it's solved I still am hoping Tati comes back in the summer. Oh my, you and this thought. This I'm is telling not happening. You, I'm telling you, I called Who's your last source, week. bro? NYCFC stars. No, I'm joking. <laughs> he didn't tell me that. But my prediction is I, you know, I called it last week, but I am solidifying it today, Monday, March 20th, listening to it probably on Wednesday because that's how long it's going to take us to edit this. <laughs> um, 
Dottie coming back in the summer. All right. Dottie's coming it's back. It's not happening. But let's move on. The the DC United killer, Tiago, came back out. <laughs> this guy is ruthless, bro. So ruthless. Why does he hate DC United? I mean, who doesn't hate bro, DC Bro, he United? went to the Capitol one day and was like, this is trash, bro. I came to America for this, bro. <laughs> you know what happened? He went to the post office museum. And he's like, that's the best thing you got at Post DC. office museum? It's There's a there's like a U.S. post office museum in, in, uh, in DC. Don't they have the Smithsonian? Yeah, but maybe he didn't know. Bro, he, he should have went to this Miss Pony and he would have been like, I'm not scoring against DC. <laughs> he went to the post. I hear the post office museum is actually pretty. It's probably not called the post office museum, like the USB. Whatever. <laughs> Point is, he had a bad experience. He's a beast, my guy, against them. Yeah, he's deadly against them. That was a beautiful little flick, too. And that's what we want. Like, that's why I'm like, yo, Talis could be our nine. Wasn't that I mean, so, Talis, Tiago. Wasn't that so reminiscent of Hebed, too? Like, it was Hebed, but with the speed. That little flick yeah. for the goal. No, but the crazy thing is there was another game. They showed uh, NY, NYCFC's Twitter account um, showed another goal that he scored against them. And he did the same flick on that. <laughs> this guy's just flicking flick and scoring on them. It was it was crazy. So you want him to play the nine is what you're saying? I I want him to be that good every game. <laughs> I want him to be that good too, man. He actually got what was his rating on Fop Mob? I think it was actually pretty high as well. It was a eight. Oh no, it was a seven point two. I gave him too much love. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I thought he came out there with fresh legs, and I think that's so great about him is that when he comes out there with fresh legs, he's just so much faster than everyone else, and he actually put in some defense. I think Nick might have talked to him and said, <laughs> "If you want to be out there, you gotta play a little bit on the D." So, uh, so with all this love we're giving to our team, who was your player? Who would you say was your player of the match? Um, you know, I'm gonna go with Cushing's player of the match, which was I think Chano. I think he, I know we gave up two goals, but if you're watching that game, there was so many times when Benteke was out there and, and it wasn't really the times that he scored, but like the rest of the time they put pressure on him. They lined him up him and, um, and Tiago Martins, like they found ways to like, not let him get to the place where he wanted to in the box to score. And I saw that it looked like they were having, you know, a boxing match out there. And so I really appreciated those two guys out there. I'm, I'm glad we scored goals. We need goals to win. Uh, but Benteke is no joke. Yeah. And I like focused on that. And I kept looking for him to like, you know, expose us. And he did. The, but at the same time, I thought they played really the well. The funny thing is, uh, so I go into the 45 minute. We go into halftime. You know, they score instantly after halftime. But I'm there with Trey. And I'm like, yeah, Benteke is not doing much. Ten seconds later, <laughs> Benteke scores in the second <laughs> half. He's like, that was because of you. That was because of you. <laughs> Trey from Blue Balls is like, you you messed that up, bro. <laughs> but let's let's hear what Nick Cushing had to actually say about Shanoa Martins because he elaborates a little further than you did. And he said, yeah, these guys should have been the player of the match. It has to go to one of the central defenders. I think the two of them played against a guy that is really, really high level. At dealing with direct balls, at crosses, at flicking the ball on, at setting the ball to midfield players. Christian Benteke showed tonight that his level is really high. Um, and those two guys managed him really well. Of course, they didn't win every ball, but they affected him. They made sure that he didn't win things clean and they pushed the line high and played games with him to make sure that he couldn't be dominant. Yeah, so same thing you were saying. But one thing that I uh, that it wasn't played there, but Nick Cushing also added to that and said he actually subbed in Alfredo Morales because... They're so dangerous aerially. Like uh, with the ball in the air, they're dangerous. And he said Alfredo Morales has is one of our better defenders defending with the aerial attack. So that's why he subbed them in. Uh, so I just thought that was interesting. I, I think Nick Cushing's been really insightful lately in his like press conference and really gives like insightful reasons to why he's put somebody into the game, which is cool to see. Yeah, I do. I love the insight he gives. You know, I remember when we made that first transition to like um Ronnie. To Cushing, it was like, damn, Cushing doesn't have that same like presence that Ronnie does. But like the more we've worked with him and the more comfortable he's been, and now he's like the full head coach, you can see not only confidence in him, but you get so much more insight than you did with Ronnie. Yeah, for um, sure. And the only time Ronnie would really give you a detailed answer is if you gave him a very detailed question, like, hey, you guys ran like the four, you know, four, three, four, one, blah, 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 like, and stuff like that. And then he would like answer you 
showing that he would do that, but Cushing like consistently answers with that type of insight. And I really appreciate that from him. Um, so yeah, I gotta agree with him for sure. Um, even though we've been talking about all the good, we did allow two goals, but Aza gave up two scores. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on Baraza? Uh, it was, were those goals his fault? In my opinion, no. I thought Barasa played really well. I mean, not only did I not think those two goals were his fault, but I thought he had some amazing saves, especially that one save on the 70th minute uh, where there was a cross and he was able to get a hand on it, but it bounced to a DC player. And then he was able to make that save on a uh, DC player. I think Gray then kicked it out of the box. Oh, yes. Early um, in the game. But nah, that wasn't early in the game, but that was 70th minute. But it's okay that I thought that was a really good save for Barasa, who doesn't, you know, who's still a young dude. Um, and I just thought he couldn't have really done much to stop those two goals. I thought that those two goals were given up by just carelessness. Like, one happened immediately after the 45th minute started, and it was like these guys were just not prepared. Yeah. And then the second time was as soon as they scored. No, as soon as we scored. I'm sorry, as soon as we scored. Yeah, they scored. Yeah, and it was like uh, that, the second that was the same thing we did last the, year all the time. Yeah, we did do that. The second goal was on a set piece, right? It was on a set piece, yeah, or on a corner. I believe it was on a corner because I remember. Uh, whatever it, it, it was it, a corner, and then Parks went down. Yes, 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 yes. The the corner. What what was crazy is the corner goals. Like they almost scored a second one on us with with that, which was I mean a third one on with the corner uh, set piece, which is crazy. I just felt like we were kind of poor defensively on those set pieces. I mean they, you know, Cushing said it. They're much better aerially yeah. and aerially. I definitely didn't say that right. But the other thing that Cushing mentioned in the interview was how Parks. He couldn't take Parks out of the game because Parks gives him height. Oh, and yeah. so, I, you know, something that I think we've been saying for a long time, this team is dumb short. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think we're. I want to. That should They should have a thing like average height of the team. <laughs> Bro, we got to be the shortest team in the league. We got Chanel, Bro, Parks, and we, Tiago Martins. I think that's it. Bro, we got rid of Maxi Morales. Our height average <laughs> has increased so much, bro. Bro, that's true. But we got, but we also lost Hebe's brain, which helped increase, you know, our height by like three inches. So I don't know. Don't play Hebe's head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, thoughts on your favorite player ever, NYCFC Pellegrini, that I, you just constantly talk about now. I know, I, I, it's funny. I like love to tease him when he's playing bad, but I also love to love him. <laughs> I think Pellegrini is fantastic. I just think he's like the it factor if he can become the player that like Inter Miami thought he was going to be. You know, whoever had him before Inter Miami. I just think, oh, and, and Cushing mentioned it actually. Do you have that Cushing? Uh, yeah, piece? yeah. Let's play that. Mateus Pellegrini's work rate sets the standard for our team. If we're going to be a team that wins, everyone has to work as hard as him. And if we do, we'll be a really difficult team to play against. So, yeah, he, he talks about his work rate. I, I, I agree. He hustles. I mean, he's not the fastest, but <laughs> he, he, definitely, he definitely has played a lot better. Yes. He's, he's like evolving game after game. And you can't say that that wasn't a huge... I mean, the thing is, the difference between this game and last game and what he played the number 10 are just like night and day. And I just think he's, if he keeps evolving at this pace, the man could be a superstar by the end of the season. All right. Superstar. Let's calm down. <laughs> DP maybe worth that DP money. He got a long time ago. <laughs> I'm just saying, I believe in you Pellegrini. <laughs> I saw him after the game. I said, uh, good job. He said, Thank you. Oh my, you and this thank you. Everybody just says thank you to you. I do want to mention one thing about the DC United game. So Wayne Rooney had some, I would say, tough, rough words for the way his team performed in the first half. Let me let me play this clip for you. First half to first half was nowhere near good enough. Um, and I don't know, I don't know why. You have games where you you can't understand why they performed so bad and I could have took every player off at half time. He was being honest. Just told the players that. What was the message during the half time to respond? Um I don't think I can give the, the language he used. Um <laughs> I'm being honest on that, but So he basically said all his players could have been benched at halftime. 
now i wanted to get your thoughts i think this is something we like as fan we always get upset like if if a coach is giving us generic answers like yeah we could have done better or we could have done this but what is, what is your opinion on the coach actually calling out the team and saying something along the lines like anybody could have been benched or i can't even tell you what i said to them at halftime i mean i love that stuff man i grew up with that tough love we grew up with that tough love mom who she's like you got to get your shit together or it's going to be bad and i i think sometimes tough love is needed and honestly i didn't think I mean, I get it. It's, it's. I thought it was funny though that like he said such strong words with such a light voice and like <laughs> no presence. I I expected Wayne Rooney to come in there and feel like a boss, and he came off so like I don't know what the word is. Timid. You notice that during the press conference? I wouldn't say he was timid, but I don't agree with you in the sense that what we're talking about is him calling out his team, and I just don't think that's good for morale. Like now, now you hear that sound by you hear like you could have benched the whole team. What does that do for morale? Does that really boost you up? Does that really make you feel like oh this guy's got my back, or is he gonna go to the media and call me out? I mean, we all can't be Ted Lasso as managers, man. <laughs> some people use positive reinforcement, some use negative. You gotta take that. And look, they played a lot better the second half ish. So cursing them out worked. <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes you need that, man. All right. I'm okay with it. All right. Let's get into uh Houston Dynamo. That's who we're playing next. Um, you do all the homework and I just sit around and look pretty. So <laughs> tell me a little bit more about this team. Well, for people who don't know too much about Houston Dynamo, um it was actually their former DC United coach Ben Olsen is the player head coaching the Dynamo team. Is the head coach. Is That's... the head coach. Is that what I not said? No, you said the player that head coach. My bad. <laughs> so Ben Olsen used to coach DC United. He now coaches um Houston Dynamo. Um, and it's kind of a little bit what happened with DC United, honestly. They parted ways with 15 of their players. They brought in 13 players. And uh, I was watching some interviews with um, that they had with the Houston Dynamo team. And pretty much they're saying, you know, Herrera came here, not at the prime of his career, but he still has a lot of in him and did not love how that team was working last year. So they, you know, they said that is a staple of our team and we need to build the right pieces around them. They have a lot of young guys here, but really that mid game is controlled by um Herrera and I think that's that's really what's going to happen the midfield is going to be where we win or lose the game so it's going to be really interesting because it's going to be Herrera I forget the dude who's who's next to Herrera now I'm blanking on it but Herrera and him versus Parks and Sands so I'm excited to see what's happening right now they have a 1-0 and 2 record not playing great they just beat Austin um which is surprising Austin's struggling this season Austin's really struggling this season uh, but I do think that this team has a weakness on the defense, and I think we can expose them. So that is uh, that's kind of my scoop on the Houston team. All right, let's 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 get into starting 11. Um, so this is who we think is going to start. We got Barraza. Now, uh, granted, let me preface this by saying that uh, Cheneau is going on international duty and uh, Agenic, right? Micha, yeah. Yeah, Micha, Micha is going on international duty as well. So now we are expect now we won't have these players. So this is the lineup that we in- anticipate without these players. So we have Baraza, Kufre, Martins, Chano, Gray, Keaton Parks, Sands, Pellegrini, Santi, Perea, and Talis Magno. I'd just like to clarify you said Chano. We are saying Tony Alfaro. Oh, yeah. Uh, Instead of Chanel. Yes, apologies. Tony Alfaro. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, what do you think about that? I mean, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, like, are we going to play four in the back? How do we? How are we going to line up now that we don't have Chanel? I think, it, does it change the way we, we, um, we play the game? Yeah, I mean, my thought is, do you want to actually... Do you have enough confidence that Tony Afaro could fill the shoes of Chano, or do you put more, um, what's the word, backup on defense? And then you put, you know, Sands back there. You put 
uh, Alfredo Morales? Do you feel more confident Alfredo Morales playing center back over Tony Afaro? No, there's Afaro? no way. I mean, we've not, we, well, we you know, one, one thing we could have, no, but then we, we already lost, uh, because I was thinking you could put Gray as center back. We haven't, that was his natural position before. But then we don't have a right back. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. I don't know. This is going to be an interesting week. Um, especially on the road, it's going to be tough for us. But I think uh, I think this is the best lineup we can have out there. So other you than... think Tony Afaro plays better than Alfredo Morales if they were in that spot? Yeah, in that spot, yes. I think uh, Alfredo Morales is most effective in the midfield. So I don't think you can have him as a center back back there. So I think we're going to see Tony Alfaro for the first time. And I think... Uh, it's going to be a testament to see if he's actually good or not. I met Tony Alfaro uh, at that gala event, and he laughed at like four of my jokes, so I'm cheering for him. Damn, so, how drunk was he, bro? <laughs> honestly, I think he was just being nice. I think he didn't think I was a reporter, and he thought I was one of the guests who <laughs> paid money to be there. And so he was like, all right, let me laugh at this guy's jokes. But I'm going to pretend he thought I was actually really funny, and uh, and I'm going to like him. <laughs> I like anyone who thinks I'm funny. All right, let's let's get into our money, our bets for this game. Um, yeah, we have plus one sixty for the NYCFC win, plus two twenty for the tie, plus one fifty for Houston Dynamo to win, and a minus one sixteen for the over two and a half. So we are no, we're not favorites, but but Houston Dynamo is slight favorites, which is crazy because they're still plus money, but they're uh, they're home. But we, uh, yeah, I think we have a better record. I also think these sporting guys have no idea about what's going on in MLS. <laughs> and uh, yeah, these bookies have no idea. Remember, we were looking at the anytime score last week, and it was like, uh, it was only like plus 200 that, like, oh, it was like, would score yeah, like yeah, that. it was crazy. It was like a homegrown hasn't scored for NYCFC. Ah, I think he's gonna score this way <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but also at the same time nycfc struggles when they're not at home yeah so can they win in a regulation pitch uh <laughs> without chano which is a big you know i think hit to the defense uh so yeah we just saw how important chano is uh when he was covering benteke and that team these united so i think it's gonna be tough but I think we're going to have to go, though. Well, I'm going over two and a half. I mean, now that our defense is a little bit depleted, we're uh, we're away from home. I'll go over two and a half as my bet. Mm. What do you got? If I had to take one of these four bets, I think I'm going to go with the tie. Just because, you know, we've tied in our past game. Um, and I am I'm really concerned about having Chano at center back. Um, I think there's just a lot of chemistry that happened in the center back. And, uh, you know, we didn't talk about it, but Houston Denham also has a Ferreira and they have that young dude. And I think Ferreira is trash the way he played in the USA team. No, they don't have Ferreira, bro. They do. There's no way they have Ferreira. They do have Ferreira. I'm going to have to Google this right now. Okay. But I think you're wrong in that. Please hold while he Googles that, that Daniel Ferreira. is crazy. Yeah, Dallas. He plays for Dallas. <laughs> So Daniel I, is incorrect. I knew you were wrong about Sorry, that. Sorry, they have this young shark. I forget the young dude. It starts with a B. But damn, I really thought it was Houston. No, I slacked. Texas, um, though. Yeah, <laughs> at least it's the right state. Uh, but anyways, Herrera has been playing really well. Uh, and that scares me a little bit with us having a big gap like Shinoda miss. So I'm going to go for the draw. Okay. So what's final score for you? I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. NYCFC. You never go against the boys. I'm going 2 1. We win. I think we're going to keep scoring goals. Remember, we're, nobody's gone offensively for us. Nobody's going on international duty. They're all here and they're going to Houston and they're going to score some goals. I hope you're right. I hope, you're, <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Guys, if you like the channel, please like, comment, subscribe. Any final words from you, Danny? No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't prep any final words. Do you have any final words? Um, no, I'm sad that they're not home. I'm gonna be honest. But, I'm sad, but, but I'm not. actually glad I get to see some Apple TV production. I, I know that's that. one thing we should talk about. Uh, that Apple TV, I like it, but at the same time, there's no other games. Like you leave the you leave the stadium, and you're like, all right, I can't watch any more soccer now. <laughs> Seriously, I really think 
you know, I, I love the idea of having all games on Saturday. But give me a 1 p.m. Give me a 4 p.m. I think somebody said do it like a Sunday, like an NFL Sunday. Like you have some games at 1, you have some games at 4, you have some games at 8. And then you have, let's say, your primetime game on a Sunday. Like yeah. you have all the games Saturday and then you have your primetime game on a Sunday. But it sucks. You like literally can't watch. Like I remember like I got home after the uh, NYCFC game. There was one game and that was basically it. It was the LA Galaxy, but I didn't really want to watch it. And then they couldn't watch anything else. I like the recap show, though, the, the one that they do after, I mean, the next day. But Oh, and also one last thing I wanted to say was, you know, we recorded the press conference, which we showed some of the footage today. Let us know if you guys like that, man. We want to keep doing that. If everyone appreciates that, we can get it out. So yes, let we, us know. We'll try to keep producing good content. Tell us if we suck or not, man. We want to know. Give us feedback. <laughs> they already know we suck. <laughs> Please. Please. Come on,